Hello guys. So today we are covering the introduction to moment distribution or successive, successive approximations method. This is a, let me, let me start by telling you that this is a still a stiffness method. First of all, uh, it takes only into account uh, the bending deformations. Why am I not showing here? Is it not? Okay, now here I am. Hey, how are you doing? <coughs> so it takes only bending deformations. Uh, of course, uh, it's a displacement method. What else, what else, what else? This method was devised originally by uh, Hardy Cross. Hardy Cross. Uh, around 1924, let's say 1924-ish here, and it was it was super, 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 super cool method, super important method, and it's a still a very important and cool method. But when the computers came in the 70s or so, yeah, the computers came in the 70s, believe it or not, 60s actually, but let's say 70s, and then this method. Uh, started transforming uh, using a slope deflection and using this for a more uh, computerized problem uh, that uh, follows a matrix approach uh, system. And I'm going to try to do some problems regarding the matrix method uh, later on, even if you don't if, if you don't get asked for those methods in the exam. At least you can use it for for review. This method is highly in use today. I love this method because it allows you to solve problems in a really, really easy and fast way that if you use a slope deflection or please, the method of forces, it will take forever and ever and ever. You can solve it using nothing. The, the basics of this method, I'm going to try to explain it here with a generic approach, is uh, something like this. Let's say that you have a beam like that, and I imagine that you know that it's statically indeterminate, right, because you have three. 6, 7, so it's a statically determinant of 4 degrees, subject to, I don't know, whatever type of load you can imagine, I'm just going to put this load for, this is going to be just a representative with, without numbers experiment, let's say this is W1, this is W2, this is A, B, C, and then this is uh, L, let's say L1 and L2, and what the method do, is I don't know how to solve this, you know something? But what if I lock, and by lock, I'm gonna tell you what it means. What if I lock all joints? By locking all joints, what I'm meaning is I'm gonna make every single one of those joints, I'm gonna make it fixed. This is fixed already. So instead of this roller, I'm gonna make this fixed, fixed and fixed like that. And if this is fixed and I have this load, I know because it's a common knowledge and I could beforehand calculate those even, I could calculate it, what is called the fixed end moments. So I can go and calculate the fixed end moments, which as the, 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 the name says is imagining that this every one of these uh, these joints is fixed or is locked that's what you have that's why you have the lock method if you have that well this is really easy because you know you're gonna have here the moment a b and this is the, gonna be the moment b a remember w1 and w2 and this is gonna be the moment b c and this is gonna be the moment c b for this case, that moment, you can find it in the back of the books and it's, uh, you can derive it if you want to use conjugate beam or you want to use, a, I don't know, a slope deflection even method for deriving these moments, but th those are common knowledge, as I told you. Uh, this is a WL squared divided by 12 for this case, and you can find them in the back of the book. So you can find that. Now, usually, usually, uh, these, this is a fix, I don't care. This is already fixed, I don't care. 
but this is not really fixed. If you look at that and we try to put that in the original joint again, what is going to happen is that I'm going to have a disjoint, I'm going to have a moment and a moment like that. This is going to be the moment B A transfer to here and this is going to be the moment B C transfer to the joint. And usually these two moments are not going to be the same. If they were the same, peace be with you. Done. Solve. Finish. But usually they are not the same. So you look for, in this case, you look for a unbalance. Unbalance joints. And in this case, this will be an unbalanced joint. This value will be bigger than this value for this particular case if this W is bigger than this W, but that doesn't matter. In reality, what we are saying. So this joint is going to have an extra an extra moment going in this direction it's going to be the extra moment meaning we're going to need a balancing moment in the other direction like that i'm going to call that moment for balancing which would be no other thing i'm going to put it here on balance join the uh, join and get calculate calculate the uh, balancing moment is just this value minus that value and what happens is that if this is lock no problem but as soon as I unlock that and allow this to rotate the way it was before because it was rotating before it was like that then this thing this beam is going to somehow the form like this and originally remember I had this MAB here and this MBA that I assume when it was locked and I'm gonna have this MBC and MCB but then I have this balancing moment that the balancing moment has to come and somehow compensate for this rotation. This balancing moment has to be transferred here and here to compensate for whatever is happening. And it's going to create a proportion of this moment is going to be transferred here. And the proportion of this moment is going to be transferred that. Now, that proportion, that proportion, that extra moment, I'm going to copy here that that extra moment let me put here usually MBA and actually yeah MBA and MBC are not equal and opposite or not the same so the joints is on balance joint is on balance if the joint is on balance there is an extra moment so I have to get that moment and distribute it distribute the balancing I don't know if these terms are the correct but I'm gonna use them anyway because I like them so the balancing moment to both sides to both sides of the joint now <coughs> you're not gonna do that distribution in whatever way you want you have to do this according to the bending stiffness which is gonna provide for a distribution factor And in the next video, I'm going to explain you what is a distribution factor. But the distribution factor is only how much of this moment, this M, this moment here, this balancing moment, is absorbed by this, and how much is absorbed by this other one. By the way, this should go in the same way, these moments in the same way, like that. Same sign. And this is called, I'm going to call this uh, the moment, balancing moment, 
corresponding to BC and I'm going to call this the balancing moment corresponding to uh, BA. BA. Now what happened? Uh, if you remember when, when we discussed this in a slow deflection and everything else, the fact that I'm applying, applying, I'm not applying, but this is the method, right? I'm applying an extra moment here. Uh, once I unlock it again, so now unlock it, unlock the join, and once uh, recently balanced, and once I do that, once I apply that moment over there, of course that moment is going to have an impact also in the other end. And part of this moment is going to be transferred to this end and it's going to come here. So I'm going to put that, that that's the moment, the balance moment BA carried to that end. And it's carried to that end as in the same way that this moment is carried to that end. Moment BC, the balancing moment BC carried to that part. And it's, it's going to be carried just by multiplying by a carryover factor. So that moment is the part that is called carryover, carryover, the balancing, the corresponding, the corresponding uh, balancing portion to the other end of the element, meaning this part here. And at the end, then you lock the joints again. You lock for all the joints again. Now, what do you have here? You have here already this MAB, but you also have the moment, the balancing moment BA carried to this part. At this joint, you're going to have originally your moment BA, but you also are going to have the portion of the balancing moment BA, corresponding to BA. And at this end, you're going to have the moment BC But at the same time, you're going to have also the balancing corresponding to BC. And at this other end, then you're going to have the moment CB plus the moment, the portion carried from the balancing moment BC. If you add this and you add this and you add this, then you see once you add all of these, this side of the moments, which I didn't put it by the way, it's here. This side of the moment and this side of the moment should be the same value. If they are the same value, you're done. If they are not the same value, then what you do is that you lock again, look for the most unbalanced joint, and repeat. At the end, what happened? At the end, you're gonna have the fix and the end moments at the at the structure, and then if you want to continue, then you can calculate extra reactions, and then I don't know, draw the diagrams if you need to draw the diagrams, draw the diagrams, and use that information in any way that you want to. So this is the very 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 cute a uh, very very uh, quick picture of how the method works now in the next video I'm going to show you some assumptions and some formulas that you need to and some how to calculate the values that we have to calculate so keep watching the next video this is just as I said a very very brief introduction of how the method works now watch for the next video and then after the next video we're gonna start solving problems see you guys have a good day